Welcome to the Only One Mike Podcast called Gerard, Brooklyn, Dre, just me. How y'all doing? What, what up, what up? It's what good. Up, what up? All right. Yeah, just us today, guys. No guests, but we got something to talk about. R. Kelly, sentenced to 30 years. Football My mind's numbers. telling me no. That <laughs> just messed up, man. 30 <laughs> joints, man. Nine counts of federal racketeering and sex trafficking. Um, so how you feel about that? <sighs> um, listen, man, I, I don't know the full story. It's, you know, to me, we was discussing this behind the scenes is that I don't know what it's based on. Like, I could be wrong and please correct me if I'm wrong, but evidence. Were they just going by these girls' accusations? Did it wasn't they, just a girls. Uh, well, you know, a boy came out. Yeah, it was two, two, yeah, men, yeah. two men. All right, so yeah, so nine women and two men. These are the they they gave their testimonies. They told the jurors that Mr. Kelly had inflicted severe sexual, physical, and emotional abuse to them. Let me put it like this: I feel like this. I feel like one, he should definitely be held accountable for what he did. Do I think that 30 years is appropriate? That might be a little bit excessive. However, the major part that everybody is forgetting is that what about these parents? No, Nobody's holding the parents accountable. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to sound funny, but like people see stars, they see opportunity. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of stars that are out there People idolize them. They try and get money from them any way they can. Um, I guess it would be a form of extortion, right? Listen. But at the end of the day, I know that my 11th grade child in high school or my 12th grader is not going to spend a night over R. Kelly's house just because he's R. Kelly. Hmm. Hey, listen, even bigger than that, I go to church now, man. I, I'm trying not to have like a violent, you know, we praying so we don't have a violent bone in our body. But let me tell you something, man. If my <laughs> kid was stuck at R. Kelly's house and you're busting down the door, it's gonna go real left. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna go real left. As and then as- to try, man, I don't know if you saw the documentary, but then it was like, this Which lady one, surviving was R. Kelly? for her child to come outside. She was pleading, surviving R. Kelly, right. That's what happened? The documentary Surviving R. Kelly. That's what you're talking about. Yes, yes. Yeah, I did. So yeah. she was pleading for she was pleading for the daughter to come outside. But like, I think, but I think at that point they were they were considered grown, you know. So they were just on their own thing, not coming out at that point, you know what I mean? But I, I guess where that whole thing starts is they're saying that when those little girls came in there, they were supposed to be underage, supposedly, you know what I mean, or allegedly, and um. I think when she, that when I was showing that portion of the sh- of that uh, surviving R. Kelly, I think they had been considered you know of age then, and they were just making their own decision. Well, a lot of them Supposedly testified. The a lot of them testified <clears throat> that they were minors when he first had sex with them. First had sex. The key word. Well, in the yeah, surviving yeah. R. Kelly documentary, they said that he used to linger around outside, like not too far from the high schools. So he was hanging out at the McDonald's. Hanging out at the McDonald's by the high school. So he was waiting for him. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, even even me, I'm trying to think of who I love. So, okay, I was in love with Rakim. I was in love with Kane. As a young girl, had I seen them on the street, I probably would have been a little, like, starstruck. You know what I'm saying? Asked for an autograph, but never would I feel in my heart that it would be okay if I was propositioned to go to their house, I don't know. Would it be? I mean, because it's if you, not if okay. You, it's not okay, but I'm saying, and then don't hit me with the creep stick, man. But you just said that if you, these are two people that you, you know, you idolize, you idolize if I can use that word. And mm-hmm. you, a young girl, and you see him, and somebody, you know, one of these guys propositioned you. Are you in the Listen, right frame of mind to you, think that that's right or wrong? You know what I mean? Listen, I, you have to, what I'm saying, I guess it's the, the core values that were instilled in me. I know to value myself. Anybody can meet a star. What does that mean? If they pull down their pants and pee just like everybody else. But I think that's, a, that's an important thing you said. You know, you have family, like you raised by your father, you know what I mean? So 
Let me tell you something. All of this stuff that's going on that R. Kelly is being accused of is not new. You know what I mean? When I went to high, it's been going for high decades. school in New York, they were grown men picking up little girls at the school, and it was it was it been going on for a long period of time. This used this used to be considered normal. I'm not saying that it's right. You know what I mean? And I don't agree with it. Yeah, like, yeah, no, no, normal. no. Where it's it, not normal. It's yeah, not, not normal, normal at all. When you trap somebody in a house. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm not even talking about that portion of it. I'm just talking about grown men. Coming to high oh, school, of and course, up little girls and stuff like that. It was a huge thing when I was in high school. It's that still little a girl huge would say thing. that they got a they got a a, a man taking care a of older them. dude. Yeah, yeah. older dude yeah. buying them sneakers, the fifty four elevens, whatever. Yeah, it's still yeah. a thing. It's still a thing. But and now now it's Yeezys. It's not fifty four elevens no more. Now if a man buy a pair of Yeezys, you in there? You know what I mean? Uh, but I was raised. I knew. I know better. No matter how starstruck I might be, I would know that it's inappropriate for me to go home with that man. Again, we're not, it's important that we let everybody know we're not condoning anybody, raping anybody or anybody, None. any pedophilia yeah, act or anything not. like that. But let me tell you something. Again, you had a family, you had a father, you had a home. You know, you know how many little girls is in at Corner High School, they ain't got nothing, no, fam- no family, might not be eating the night. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and, and well, are willing to compromise, you know, whatever little bit of morality they might have in order to be with that particular person. Not to mention, and you said something before, very important. I think everybody should be locked up. I think the the security, the, the security, yep. the parents, His anybody staff. in them studios that saw this stuff going on, yep. you know, because the what was the um the artist, uh, I believe, it's, isn't it Sparkle? Sparkle, Sparkle. Yeah. was saying like, yo, this is going on. People know yeah, she, she said, he, he got her niece. <laughs> he got her niece. And in the yeah. documentary, I, I forgot how to, I forgot how it actually happened. But in the documentary, she says something like she was against it and she was wrong. But she, you know, her parents had to fight that. She put up as much of a fight as she could. But like she said, she remember, I think it was her that said she remember being at the house. And, you know, this is before, or you know, like early on when she first started recording with him or whatever. And like. She would hear somebody like banging on the door. Like in one of the rooms, she would hear like banging. And then he had to give them permission to come outside. I think she referred to the wife and she was like, what is that? Like, this is what she's saying to herself. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, what is that? Where is that coming from? But you know what? what I I think too that, and we talked about this earlier, you know, prior to getting on, they're not playing with this child sex trafficking, sex, sex cults. Sex trafficking. Remember Nexium? That that went crazy with the Nexium sex cult that, that that guy, I think his name was Renee or something like that he had. Um, uh, Jaslani G- Maxwell. Then just yesterday she got like 20 years just for being associated yeah. with Epstein and, and yeah. his foolishness. So I See, think that, you know, like all of this stuff coming back to back to back to back is kind of like with him definitely is just like setting a precedent like you know, nobody's safe on this one. Nobody's getting off. Yeah, but I, what bothers me, the parents should be held accountable, in my opinion. Yes, I feel that way. However, I also know that this is a big business, okay? It really is. Sex trafficking is a huge business. It's wild stars involved with sex trafficking. Wild people are making money off of sex trafficking. Well, here's the point that I was confused about. Like, I thought sex trafficking was considered like, you know, like, whereas you got like a bunch of girls from a different state or another country and you basically stole them or something like that. And you took them somewhere and kind of put them in a house somewhere, holding them hostage for, uh, you know, for prostitution and stuff like that. So I'm kind of confused as to why he got like the sex trafficking charge. Like, did y'all find anything about that in the... Well, you know, sex trafficking is everything you just said it is, and it's also you know punishable up to like twenty years per count. So, um, no, what he's saying, well, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe what you're saying is you don't a right. better understanding of why they would give him a sex trafficking charge. Yeah, I could see rape. Saying. I could see pedophilia. You know, uh, if you're gonna, uh, you know, the, if he's uh, if this is things that he actually did, I could see you charging him with that. But the sex trafficking charge, I'm trying to see how, you know, that comes into play. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Sex trafficking is the action 
or practice of illegally transporting people from one country or area to another for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So that's the, the, the dictionary terminology for sex trafficking. Now, maybe... In a law, they can have all kinds of A's and B's and everything else that... You know, my, Instead of it being state to state, these most of the girls was from Chicago, right? Right. So maybe trafficking could be something where it's one area of Chicago to his area. You know what I'm saying? But that's why he caught the charge for sex trafficking. Well, even even in that, I mean, even if him taking the woman, it's not. I don't. I didn't hear about him prostituting any of these women. You know, and I'm, I'm assuming that you know, if I took a woman from one place to another, and I violated or, or something like that, then it would be just considered rape or whatever charge it may be. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be considered like sex trafficking. It's a little weird. Well, we can check. Right okay. I, what it is charge, too right? is um, sex trafficking of minors. I didn't realize this was different. The sex trafficking of adults is up to 20 years. If you sex traffic a minor uh, that involve force, force or fraud, that would be punishable up to a life term in prison. No, I'm 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 not well I don't I'm talking about the I'm not talking about the time. I'm talking about the, the actual what he's being charged of. You know what I mean? Whether I'm whether he should be charged of tra- sex trafficking or not, but that's not the idea. But at the end of the day, if he did what he said he if they did all these things that he said he did, then it is what it is. I'm not trying to cape for the guy or anything like that. But um I always say, man, it kind of scares me this whole court of public opinion thing. Because if you know I'm a regular person. You're, you're we're all regular people, you know. Let's say, for instance, we're stars now, you know. And then one bad situation goes on with a, a particular person. I'm not talking about, you know, just a, a sexual incident or something like that. Somebody might be lying, but you know, once you tag, like Daisy said, once you tag lame, the game is followed the leader. So then you got a bunch of people just getting on the on the back of it, and they say, "Yo, listen, he did this, he did that," because everybody's want to want a part of getting some money at this point. You know what I mean? And my question is then is that, let's say hypothetically speaking, he only did this one thing to this one person. I'm not saying that it's right. You know what I mean? But it is, it's just one person that he might have done this thing to, but everybody's saying that he did it to, you know, 40 different people, you know, and now he's doing 30 years in jail. And again, I I don't agree with him. If he did it, you know, it's on him. He got to do what he got to do. But um, that court of, pu- court of public opinion scares me. I take, take in consideration, look at Johnny Depp and his situation that just happened, right? Let's say, for instance, if, um, you know, after, you know, that person, it wasn't his wife that came out against him. Yeah. And, uh, speaking against him or whatever the case may be. And 40 other people came along and said, you know, yeah, Johnny Depp did such and such and such and such. You know what I mean? And the court of public opinion, that, that he's did it. He did it already. Yeah, you know I mean, through the social media area and all that other stuff like that, he's already convicted of, you know, uh, this crime. So, again, I, I don't know. It, it kind of scares me. I mean, but R. Kelly has already shown a pattern, I mean, of things that he's done in the past that, you know, will pretty much solidify, you know, everything that everybody else has said. I mean, he had the little tape or something like that back in the days, which to me personally, I think even they should go back and lock them people up, the judge and everybody else. If you got a videotape and it shows this is him and all of y'all danced around the situation and claimed that he, you know, paid this person off and paid that person off to get out of this, get out of that situation. I think they all should be locked up, too. I'm glad you mentioned that, because this I is agree. what the, the federal prosecutor wrote in this uh, sentencing letter. This is coming from The New York Times. And the letter said that Mr. Kelly has shown no room for these crimes using his fame and stardom as both a shield which prevented close scrutiny or condemnation of his actions. And, and it says, and a sword, which gave him access to wealth and a network of enablers to facilitate his crimes, which goes back to what you say. You have a bunch of people who might know this and is a darn fan base, which is to call his victims. Now that's the thing I often think about too, was like how many people knew, what this guy was on, which, and like, I'm talking about in the celebrity circle, he's done a lot of collaborations and produced a lot of music for a lot of people. And I'm pretty but sure. If I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no I problem. apologize. That's all right. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of what he was doing was like in his house. So I'm assuming, okay, so let's just put it out there. Obviously he has mental issues. He has a sexual 
you know, yeah, he's, it, it's sexual. People have sexual problems. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, problems is not the word that I'm trying to say, but like, I'm abused as a, as a child. Um, maybe they were, maybe he was touched. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, oh, they already I, believe said that. Said, I believe it said in one of them documentaries. Uh, according to, um, him, it was allegedly his sister. Okay. Abused him and so his brothers. Right so. there. That's something wrong right there. Because we know we would never touch our sibling. You as understand a, what I'm as saying? a matter of fact, so, uh, this is what this is what his lawyer said. Because I'm glad you touched on that too. This is her sentencing letter. His lawyer name is Miss um, Bo Jean. Uh, Mr. Kelly's lawyer told the judge that the prosecutors portrayed her client as a one-dimensional villain, undeserving of any measure of humanity or dignity, and that this is and that there is far more to the picture. She said, to your point, just traumatic childhood. Which, des- which includes severe history of sexual abuse by relatives and others warrant a lenient sentence. And they said that was according to an interview he did with GQ in 2016, saying that he was sexually abused while he was growing up. I totally feel like, you know, because let's just be honest. This is an honest platform. You know, I don't go around sharing stuff like this all the time. But I was raped in 2006. It's not a good feeling. It's... Um, you know, you question your yourself. You 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 try and find ways in your mind to, you know, it's crazy. It, it's like a mental thing. You it almost becomes like a form of abuse. The things that you go through after you've been violated like that, because then you then you start blaming yourself. Like you know, here you are, you got violated, but you you're finding fault within yourself. It messes with your self esteem. It messes with your mind, your whole entire mind frame. So. And let's not, you know, I, I, I feel for the women that were in that house, if they were held captive, right. I feel for them. You know what I'm saying? All the ones that from the documentary that he gave a disease to, I feel for them. You, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like, one, it's a lot of parties, just like you said, Andre, that's involved. And they're not getting, they're not suffering from this. And they should be. The parents... The, the whoever knew in his on his staff what way that knew or heard about what he was doing but because he was making hits like that they probably wanted to you know because to have R Kelly on your album was really something some of my some of the greatest performers have performed with R Kelly or he wrote their songs so it's sad that it's sad that mental abuse is me, mental health is something that's taken so lightly in this country because it's a mental health issue hey listen man r kelly would have to be the dumbest person <clears throat> since oj <laughs> if let's say for instance that first case he beat the first case right with the videotape and everything like that and then you come back and continue to do this you got to be a stone cold nut right you know what i mean to continue to do this that was a big case back then I don't know how, again, I don't know how he... But it's a sickness. It's a sickness. So that's what we have to keep in mind. So we got to look at sexual predators as disgusting as they are and rapists as disgusting as they are it, and, and pedophiles as disgusting as all of that is. It's a mental problem. It's a sickness. And there's really no resources to help these people. Well, again, and the fact that, I, and I'm not, again, we got, I keep saying we, we don't condone what he thought. I mean, but why would you continue to do that here in the United States of America? Were you saying, oh, he's R. Kelly, he has money, he should have went to a different country? Maybe. You Instead know, of getting if, that, if that's what you're into, I mean, I'm not saying that is right. I'm not saying anybody it. should do it. I'm just saying, like, you would have to be the dumbest person. That's like just saying, like, I got caught with 100 bricks of cocaine and just coming right out of it. And you beat the case. You and then you the go case. right back to the and then you come back out, you come back out and get another hundred bricks. Like it doesn't from the make, same yeah, <laughs> yeah from the I same connect, good. the same everything, you know, you just So maybe just, the prosecutor was right that it was a narcissism thing. I I don't narcissistic. Yeah. Oh, I think his ego was I think his ego played a he part. He can't be that stupid as a black man. He yes, can't he can. be that dumb. He I know can. people that's more dumb than him. I'm quite sure there's some idiots in this world, but no, I'm saying I just don't I don't get how he can he can feel that way. He walked into a courtroom with a videotape and he beat it. I, I can feel how he can feel strong about that. But to go back into it's like OJ. 
And like all the stuff you all, all the stuff you beat and then you you get locked up for stealing your own stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's that's but that's what I'm saying. That's it's a that's another person with mental issues. To me, as far as I'm concerned, leave, he had leave, like, leave juice out of this. Leave my all right. It I'm just saying. To do with juice. He did I'm the man did his time. Remember, if you watch, <laughs> if you watch the show, I mean, if you watch the People versus OJ, which was yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Did you see how like he I'm was not black? I'm OJ. Arrogant? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was OJ I, Simpson at that time. It was OJ Simpson. Exactly. So he was R. Kelly at that time. And R. Kelly was big. I'm not just saying for the black community. Uh, hold on. I gotta, stop you, right I gotta stop you right there. I gotta stop you right there. Hold on, hold on. I don't know if if um you can com- make those comparisons of OJ back in OJ's heyday to R. Kelly. No. I was not I, I, I believe I, I I feel on that one. I think that in their respective times, they're equally as... Uh, That's what I'm saying. He was big right. during the time that he was out. He was huge. Everybody wanted R. Yeah. Kelly on their joint. Everybody yeah. was trying to get R. Kelly to cut, you know, to to do a record with yeah. him. But OJ, like but, OJ, but OJ was in a naked gun. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm done. I think I'm done. That's Have you it. ever watched the naked gun? gun? You know, you know yeah. what I mean? Deserve the Oscar for thirty three and a third. <laughs> All right, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. You know, I think they both were uh, very big names in their respective times, man. But uh, again, I kind of got to be about the dumbest person possible, man. If you, if not you he has that, sickness. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It is a sickness. Listen, you got to do like my man Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons got the heck out of Dodge, man. As soon as they started t- even mentioning his name in uh in some foolishness or whatever the case may be, we have I don't I don't think I've seen Russell in the city since. Then. <laughs> <laughs> now you got Russell. You have Nobody Russell Simmons coming out of town like again. A Queens, yeah. like a Queens dude, man. <laughs> Yeah, Russell Sightings every now and again. That's what we reduced to. Every time I see Russell, he got his legs folded up somewhere in a you know a yoga position. Yeah, in a yoga position, man. He's at home. <laughs> yeah. He's at peace. Where, where is he at again? Uh, I, don't know. I thought it was like in the Middle East somewhere. Like like India or something. He could be on the moon for all I know. <laughs> Russell on the moon. Wherever he's at, I was watching something in, uh, with him and it was showing him and he was talking about how much he's doing for the country. And <laughs> Bro, you know what's so Russell crazy? spreading that money around. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. What's so crazy is like we heard rumors about him for years too. Absolutely. Not, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's it, it's that's a heavy crown to wear to begin with. And it's, I guess that if you are not built for it, you will crack under pressure. It, it doesn't make it right what these people are doing, but for years they was talking about Russell Simmons. You know, for years, years they've been talking about Diddy for years. They've been talking about Diddy. I watched the um I watched something with Kamora Simmons man years ago. I remember you know watching the video and I was like you know it's just like kind of thing she's talking she's talking and it's like cribs or how I live in one of them joints and as she was talking she was saying something about their timeline I was like wait, wait a minute she was a kid then you know what I mean I'm using the math in my head at the time but again I could be totally wrong but uh yeah you know. It's, it's sad. But again, it's crazy how they come after these guys, man. But Woody Allen can sit right in the in a, the New York Knicks uh, game with his uh, daughter slash wife and nobody says anything about it. Daughter slash wife. <laughs> yeah. It's also a man by the name of Roman Polanski who uh, went, brought up on these charges, got out of Dodge, but still had several Oscar winning movies here in the United States. Yeah. I'm not exonerating any of these guys, man. But uh, again, if you're doing it, let's 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 start scraping, let's scrape, let's, let's scrape the pot, and let's get everybody off. <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted to ask the question: um, Did y'all see the video that's been circulating on um, on Instagram about the state of the country right now? It's the reason why Roe versus Wade is happening. Um, you know how it's a it's a ploy for white males to take the country back over. You know, I and, I, I listened to that man, and uh, I think a lot of people come in, coming to that conclusion. Like some, it's, they, they're almost like a you know how super villains used to be. Like you know, like if, if I'm ugly and messed up, then the whole world needs to be ugly and messed up. It's like it's kind of weird when it. I think we're like only, uh, from what I understand with Black people, we're only like 13% of the population. But historically, this government has done things to kind of 
keep our population controlled mm-hmm. and Latinos, you know, keep their, po- uh, uh, their population controlled in order to continue to control voting and all kind of other stuff like that. So, I mean, there might be some truth to that. Uh, but hey, listen, you know, um, we got to get ready to wrap up. Already? Already. Already. Got some things I got to take care of. But before I think I you're going to I, I got, I, you know, I'll explain it later. I'll explain it. Okay. Here. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, before we get ready to wrap though, I want to bring it back to this R. Kelly thing um, to let you know what his lawyer said. Now, listen, you know, this was the live news. So you're going to hear some stuff in the background and I have no control over that, but live news folks. Kelly has some literacy issues, so it's really important um, for um, <laughs> it's there's there's a great deal of things that have to be explained in a little a little more slowly. So, well, I mean, obviously he's devastated. Thirty years in prison is like a life sentence for him. But um, at the same time, um, you know, we knew the government was asking for twenty five years. We we were prepared for what um, the judge might impose. So it didn't come as a great big surprise. Um, we were prepared for it um, and we are not cases it's obvious he's got pending cases and uh, he has a fifth amendment right to remain remain silent and I advised him to invoke that fifth amendment route I promise you he does want to make a statement he will make statements eventually but on the advice of counsel he remains silent today will you be put in a bill public that he is not guilty <laughs> okay so the appeal will lay out that The enterprise that was charged, as you will see if you've read my post-trial motions, which you probably have not, um, our position is this was not a RICO or racketeering act violation. Um, These were isolated events that happened many years ago, and the government simply tried to plead around the statute of limitations to bring it in a RICO uh, charge, which was inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, that's what I was saying, too, man. Yeah, is that, back to your credit, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying, too. It's like, it looks like they stretched it out for him, man. And um, I'm not saying that he's, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve what he got if he did what he did. But at the end of the day, that doesn't sound like, like sex trafficking sounds like, like uh, organized crime to me, almost, you know, in some sort of way. It sounds like somebody put something together to continue a crime, you know what I mean? It doesn't sound like what he's doing. It sounds like he did what he did with a bunch of women or children or whatever he did. And uh, he should be charged for that pedophilia and rape, whatever comes along with that. He deserves it. You know what I mean? If, if, if he commit those crimes, you know? Absolutely. All right, guys. So with that being said, we're going to get ready to wrap this up. The Only One Mike podcast is available on all major platforms that you stream your podcasts on. Also, check out our Only One Mike podcast YouTube channel to catch up on the past and current shows like this one. Please don't forget to rate the show and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to get in contact with The Only One Mike podcast, you can reach us via Instagram and Twitter at The Only One Mike P1, Facebook and LinkedIn at The Only One Mike podcast. And also via email at the only one mic zero zero at gmail.com. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant, because they too have their story to tell. So until next time, please keep in mind that we never had to run from the Ku Klux Klan and we shouldn't have to run from a black man. Peace. 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 Peace.